What are you doing there, Robert? I'm sewing a, a burlap curtain. Sewing a burlap curtain. How fun. Huh? Yeah. Can't wait to see it. Nice rustic for the rustic shouse. Rusty. rusty. Pretty rusty. Pretty rusty. Yeah. Boy, this place is a jumbled mess, isn't it? Yes. We don't have anything in place yet. And uh, working inside today, though, I'm going to get this joist cut out partially. When we designed the shouse, we figured the wood stove would go right here, centered between these two windows. But what we uh, failed to do when we were doing this to account for the placement of the joist because the flue pipe has to go straight up out there and that joist is in the way and we could just move the stove over a little bit but I don't know with its proximity to the windows and things uh, I feel better if we can just go straight up and out so what we need to do is after we just installed it <laughs> is to cut out you can see here this section of joist from here uh, to here uh, a little over a foot and then what we'll do is we'll take some more 2 by 10 and we'll attach it to that run it across here over in front of the cut to support it attach it to this joist here and then do the same thing on the other side so we're sort of boxing it in and then we'll add some additional strengthening right there uh, there and there and then that will create a 12 inch by 12 inch box through which this um, stove, pipe, stove pipe support can fit and so that's what's on the agenda today as well as trying to get the roof on Totally miss. You made a straight cut. Where? See, come look on on the. Oh, I see it. See, too much. Right. I just get the saws all to finish it off. You're cutting a hole in the roof. I see it. Now we have a leak. Now the ceiling is compromised. It is. And we have to uncompromise it. So we've got the first little blockage in for the chimney. So we've already got these two cross pieces up. We cut out a piece of the rafter to fit in the uh, metal chimney flue piece um, box pipe. And so right here, we have made the other kind of cross piece that's gonna fit in up like this, mm -hmm. across this way. Okay. So now as you can see, this joist here is supported by way of this support and on its tail end by way of this support. And then we've run a couple of stretchers in between here to sort of add to it. But the real strength in this would be that these cross members here both tie in this cut rafter, and then they also tie in to the two adjacent rafters, one on either side. That's where its real strength comes in. This right here is really mostly a filler. But uh, next step would be to cut a hole right up into this square hole so we can fit that uh, wood stove flue support. Hi. <laughs> we cut a hole. You sure did. I had to have help. It's all right. Okay, there, there's sexy E chip. Yeah. Putting in a clear, C-L-E-R-E -E story window or a hopper window. If you use the term, 
Huh? Well, I know, but if you look for one and they don't have a clear story, they have hoppers. No, no, they have sliders, no hoppers. Sliders, no hoppers. My bad. We look for clear story. When Egypt first said, we're going to have clear story, I googled C-L-A-I-R. Of course, that's not correct. It's C-L-E-R-E. -E. And again, there to do, huh? C-L-E-R-E. And they're to do a cross draft with the north windows. Hey everyone, it's Robert. And I'm just going to say, I'm concerned that everyone is seeing Egypt just do all the work around here. He is. No, he's not, because I've been doing dishes. <laughs> <laughs> and I helped him a little bit on the clear story windows, but he did most of it. He did a fantastic job. They look great. And it made it so much brighter in here. And I can't wait to see the draft go up through and everything. I'm so happy. And we're about to put a pro panel roof on the chows. And we're going to use this to run a guide wire on that fascia down there to know where to put it. So we bought the pro panel in sections. It's right down there on the ground right now. But <clears throat> um, we already knew how long the roof was going to be. So we had them cut each of these to a specific length, which is an inch and three quarters longer than the f in the front and in the back of the roof. So to begin putting in a pro panel roof, you just need to put it on the edge, start it at, at one of the edges of the building that you're putting the roof on and make sure it's square. And then it should go pretty easily. Um, <clears throat> normal application of the little screws is three feet, four every three feet up the pro panel roof, the pro panel, up the piece, panel, yeah. up the panel. But we're going to go two feet because of the wind problem here and hopefully that will not blow away and I don't know what else to say <laughs> that's fine <laughs> okay so here we go an inch and three quarters away from the wood fascia and the string runs all the way down now we have a nice straight line so that no matter how no matter how the you know the fascia may go in and out a little bit uh, we still have a nice straight line uh, against which we can lay our roof. These are closure strips. They're designed to go underneath the pro panel at the head and at the foot of the run. And as you see, they match the contour of the panel. Um, they're designed, a uh, panel lays on top of it, they're designed to keep out small critters bugs, things like that from getting inside uh, up underneath the panels of the roof. So. That's an entire strip or do you well, peel them apart? Oh. See, kind of part. One of these is. Where do you put them? You lay them on top of the on top of the uh, drip edge over here, this metal surface. But you have so many of them, they have to go more than just there. You put one at the top of each panel and one at the bottom. Yeah, but there's one, two, there are four per strip. Okay. See how many we got? Nine oh. panels. Maybe oh, they yeah. just gave us extra. Maybe you put them in the middle too. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but they gave us two extra. Oh, so okay, guess, so. yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I thought it looked like there were a bunch more. There we go. So, uh, they have an adhesive back, but the top is not. Uh, it, it doesn't have an adhesive so just for extra insurance and because we have such a low roof pitch good idea to add some butyl tape uh, to the top of each of these before we lay down the roof panel just for extra insurance extra adhesion we'll but also put this butyl tape uh, wherever they wherever these um, panels overlap so that's what we will do all right robert okay let's do it I ain't liking it so far, Robert. Well, we put the first one on. I don't get to really help much because I have to keep bugs off each chip. <laughs>
I'm the pest control. <laughs> you are, thank you. I am. But we have that first one on it square, so now it should be easy just to get the rest of them up. Yeah. That little be. buell tape is a little bit of a pain. Yeah, it is. But as you can see, we've got our panel pretty well lined up with that line, that uh, string we set up. And so we've got this butyl tape on this last rib ready to, because we're gonna overlay this onto it. And uh, so, you know, it occurs to me before that we need to get this screw, these screws out that are so close. I just saw that, so close because there's a lip on this but you know what? There's not a lip on the other one. Huh. Uh -oh. That's okay. That goes under. But this one will go under that one. Get off me, bug. Well, we can turn the panel around then. <clears throat> we can do that without having to remove this one. So, we'll do that. What do you mean turn the panel around? This side has a lip. That one doesn't. We just turn it around so that the next one can overlay it properly. You know what I'm saying? This one up under? No, we don't need We've already got the butyl tape on here. It's easier for us to just turn this around and lay it oh, on. Oh, yeah, because the butyl tape. Yeah. Oops. It's okay. 